Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So today's Friday and Fridays I like to do florals most of the time. And so I thought we'd do a fun abstract floral today. Yes, we're doing abstract. And this is a really large uh, piece of paper here that I'm using. It's a 12 by 15 paper block um, by Fabiano. And it's really big. And I show you how I just take some um, hydrus watercolor from Dr. P.H. Martin's and actual watercolor so i used both of them and i removed some paint and i added paint i did everything in the kitchen sink with this guy <laughs> it's a lot of fun um, if you haven't hit the bell notification button please do so if you haven't subscribed please subscribe we have some fun over here also check out my patreon i have ad free videos traceables exclusive tutorials on thursdays that are not on youtube much longer more in depth I have reference photos sometimes traceables etc etc and a live stream in the top tier it's just a place people go and support my channel which i super appreciate um, you can check out the link in the description box and all that good stuff. And we also have a Facebook group where we share our tutorial paintings and people having questions. And patrons get first dibs on watercolor workshops and retreats. So it's a great place to be. <laughs> Without further ado, let's get painting some abstract florals and having fun. All right, my little peeps, let's talk about supplies. I have a huge block from Fabiano. This is a, well, not huge, but really large size, 12 inch by 18 inch cold press block. Um, I'll be using my flat wash brush, just one inch. This old big old brush, I have another video similar where I use this brush. This is a Royal and Lang, Lang Nickel Jumbo Firm brush. I can't remember where I got this, maybe Michael's? Just a big old round, and this is not like a your watercolor brush, this is like a mixed media brush, well, actually almost like a, for like acrylic, but you guys can try these other brushes with your watercolor. You don't have to use this perfect, precise watercolor. We'll go and play with some of these watercolor brushes too. Um, you know, I might even use some of my Neptune series number six. This is big, big paper, big brushes. You use little brushes for detail. You know, I've got my water jar here, my paints, and I'm going to play with, oops, it's already making a mess. The Hydrus um, PH Martin liquid concentrated watercolor from PH Martin's, um, Let's play with some of that, right? So I have no particular, um, you know, idea like what I'm doing. I'm just going to play with the paints and play with the brushes. I have an idea that I might make some marks like this, twisting the brush around to make some flowers. But this is the fun. You got to play. Now, obviously, if you don't want to spend the money playing, I'll do all the work for you <laughs> playing with all this stuff. But this is where the fun happens, right? So I think I might just start to play with adding like just a color on the on the bottom here, like maybe just a pink ground or whatever. I've got this wonderful, um, you know, rose, bright rose color from Holbein. We can start with like a little light pinky kind of color. I'm just taking, see, I'm, look at that, splattered in here. So I'm just gonna keep twisting my brush. This is the flat wash brush. See where it goes. Using this light pink color, I'm twisting it over here, wet on dry, All right? Maybe I'll go in and grab some Ultramine Blue. It's going to make it a little purple. It starts to hit that. These are things you got to do. You got to play, play, play. You got this nice Ultramine Blue Deep is like one of my favorite colors of all time. It's so beautiful just by itself. So I'm just kind of squishing that around. Then I'm mixing it with the, the rose on the paper and you can see it turning into like a lovely shade light shade of purple oops i got little paints gray in there that happens <laughs> somebody wants to come to play in the party and maybe it's paints gray see i'm just kind of twisting and moving my brush around la 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 just like so we could have mr paints gray come and have fun with the party here we go we'll see we'll play around with that now i'm going to add some greens in here right so how would i do that i'm going to clean up some of this mess here I always make my greens because that's how I how I roll. Um, we have that hydrous watercolor. I'm going to play with some cadmium yellow deep and probably some peacock blue because the, if I use the the ultramarine blue with it, it will make more of like a dull sagey kind of green because there's some red in that blue. I'm getting some bright greens in here now. Well, this will all make sense eventually. <laughs> Here I'm just mixing greens, maybe little lines here. 
So maybe I would have some like stems coming here. This is supposed to be an abstract. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's supposed to have fun. And that's what I'm doing. I'm having fun. And you can watch me do this so that if you choose not to do this, there you go. And sometimes I have a plan with this and sometimes I don't. And what's great about having a block is that really when you go wet on wet, um, it's not gonna, it's gonna dry flat eventually. So here's the ultramarine blue. See how that makes that green kind of like a sagey dull green. Just kind of putting that there, putting some marks. And I've got Prussian blue here. I'm gonna grab some burnt umber. Let's start to play with some darker greens. Getting that Prussian blue in there, mixing that up. And this flat wash brush, again, is not a watercolor brush. Mixing. You can do some marks, like actual leaf marks. See, I'm just going to twist and turn. Go across. we got this big old piece of paper. Let's play with it. Let's see what happens. Let me do all the work for you. And then if you can figure out if you want to do it. See how I'm just twisting my wrist. I'm not slamming the paper. Just kind of tapping on top of the paper. This is where I want to go grab my crazy hydras. Now the, the pink, I had magenta in here. It's gone in here and grabbed it. This is such a neon color. If I grab, what is this one? The turquoise blue. Put the little dab over in here. You can't really see this. I'll pull this up. You will see that blue Woo mix in with that yellow and you got this intense turquoise green now. And of course you can water it down with the water and it won't be so intense. We're going to play with that color. It's pretty intense. We can always tap some of that green. See where it goes. Get some of that yellow in there too. That really intense yellow. Now we're making a little bit of a mess. That's the whole fun. Here I'm grabbing that yellow. I love it. That hydrus is kind of fun, right? I'm going to the edge of the paper now. Just kind of in this section. You get the energy of me moving my arm like this. You're creating the energy in the actual picture. Let's see what happens. I'm just kind of twisting and tapping again this brush, turning it so we can kind of create some actual leaves with this brush. I mean, if you watch, I can just go like this, up, over, and twist, and you have a leaf. See, I'm just creating some fun here. And more grasses. Now I've gotten this idea that it's, the grass is kind of here, and we've got this swooping kind of stems, and we'll have some blooms going that way. So it gives me a horizontal picture. How big are the blooms out? I don't know yet. I don't think I want to make them small. I've got this big old brush, right? I got this big piece of paper. I don't want to go too small. So now I'm going to grab this baby and see what I'm going to do with this. I have, uh, this is magenta, I believe. Yes, quinacridone magenta and the hydrus. And let's go for it. Let's see what we can do with this baby. I'm going to do some twisting and turning. Whoa, look at that color big petals. Like I said, it's an abstract. It doesn't have to be perfect. And it's weird. This dropper does not want to work. It's like it taps out a little teeny bit of paint. Oh, so I just dumped a whole bunch of paint. Be careful with the, um, the ink, these watercolor concentrates, because they can stain. So now I'm making these little big taps, twisting, turning, has that nice round edge to make like a beautiful petal. Concentrated, right? Turning it, twisting it. Oh, that good stuff. Grab some water, clean off my brush a little bit, dilute the paint. And now it's gone onto that blue, so it's got a little purple tones to it. That was that underneath paint color, right? Creating some fun here. Going up in here. Like I said, who knows the outcome, but I'm just playing with my brush. Let's see what happens. Bigger strokes. Bigger strokes. And we can do some big ones down in here. We got this very vibrant pinks and greens happening. 
if I mix that with the yellow, now we have some oranges. Now it's kind of turned into red. Still twisting this big old brush. Getting all those colors in there. Cleaned it off a little bit. I'm going to grab the Cabernet Deep, really kind of straight from the tube. Kind of putting some yellow over here. And up in here. Let's see what happens. Twist, 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 twist. Twisting and turning this brush. Grab some of that pink, and that's going to change this color. I'm basically mixing on the paper. Dun, dun. Got some blooms happening there. So we've got some yellows happening, some pinks. Go back and grab some more yellow. Put that in here. Again, just playing, moving the brush around, seeing what's happening. They're kind of connecting now. We got these big old blooms. I'm gonna put the yellow and the green. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my flat wash brush. Right? I might actually go grab some nice thick dark green thick. So here's the paint. It's barely moving. It's moving a little bit. It's more of a cream texture. I'm gonna add that same green, Prussian blue, yellow, a little burnt umber. I actually might want to use a smaller brush, but I'm going to put some dark tones in first. Kind of twisting the brush around some of these bright blooms. Maybe adding a stem or two. It's a puddle kind of happening in here. Twisting it out there, here. I'm getting in that dark green color. And it's not moving as much because it's pretty thick, right? I'm going to twist it out this way, even just go right in and add some Prussian blue. That dark color next to the lighter pink really pops it. The negative painting. Really kind of thick painting here. Going in. Love these little expressive lines that I'm kind of mushing around. And it's not going to move as much, like I said, because it's thick. Now I might want to take a smaller brush. I could use my Neptune series number 12. It will have a nice point to it. Grab the same color. Maybe make it a little more green. And brown. We can do a little splattering again. Give it some more energy. Like what's going on. I'm going to do some stems. Just kind of connect them going out this way. A lot of energy coming out this way. Come up this way, all the way up to the top. Go up and through here. Come bring it down. See how it just has to unfold? Now I've grabbed some burnt umber and some paints gray. Okay, and that color, really deep, dark color tone. Stems kind of going out here. Twist back, shaking that. Stems are like peeking through around over on the flowers. Now when it dries, you can put some like ones that are going over and under on top of them. We've got a nice little mishmash happening with the yellow here. Again, putting in some dark, deep grasses. I can just put some browns in with that green. Gonna loosen up the burnt umber here. Let's play around with that in a little bit. I'm having fun with the watercolor, experimenting with color. Not everything has to be a perfect little picture. Sometimes just playing with color is all you need to do. And now I'd like to do some things where Sometimes where I like to remove some paint. So maybe I'm gonna kinda lift. So you're basically like mopping up, right? 
you're lifting with the brush you can kind of twist it. it has like an atmospheric look to it until you're twisting removing some paint leaving some paint it will change the picture a little bit right it looks like almost like sunlight was shining through right in that section kind of one of those things I like to do. It makes it have a kind of a texture to it. Now be careful when you're doing this because you can wreck your paper. So now I'm going to kind of mush the paint around a little bit. You don't want to do too much of this because you will destroy your paper. And it's kind of fun if you can just take a paper towel, kind of mush some of the color also. Right, if it's too saturated, I'm gonna tap my paper towel like this and create a nice blotting, fun texture. Oh, there we go. Again, maybe in here, I'm having some fun kind of mushing the paint. Removing it and mushing it. Be careful, like I said, you don't overdo it. Oops. You might create something crazy. I'm gonna mush some of this. I know you might say it's counterintuitive to do this, but it's kind of the process that I go through. I still kind of want to leave this. I don't know what I feel like about but this stuff over in here. I'm mush some of this. It's getting there. I feel like this is really concentrated. We can remove some of this good stuff. Right. Just kind of mush all this lovely color and paint. Let's see what happens as we remove it. Yeah. Oops. <laughs> Kicking things around. Now this is a lot of yellow paint over here. So I definitely want to blot some of that out. I'm creating a nice texture. Mm, I know it's a process. You're surprised how cool it is when you like paint it and then kind of remove it. How it comes out. It really looks quite wonderful sometimes. And then when it's dry, you can kind of go back in and kind of go over it a little bit again. Not too much. And then you have a glazing technique. So you've got that nice pattern underneath that we've created. With all this good, good stuff. And then we can go back in and create some more. It's all different now, isn't it? It's changed. It's morphed. So that's the beginning process of an abstract. We'll wait for this to dry. Actually, I do want to remove a little bit more up here. And then I'm going to go and do some flowers on top of that. And it should be like this really beautiful abstract floral. One of a kind. And you'll never get the same one twice. You just won't. Look at that already. It's looking really cool. I just love the energy of it.
Okay, so I'm going to leave this and let this dry, and we'll come back and we'll do some more flowers. Okay, mine's dry. I use the hair dryer just to make it go faster. But I'm liking the energy, so it kind of doesn't look like, doesn't it look like if you squint your eye, like there's a vase here, right? If you wanted to, you could like make a mixed media painting. You did all the watercolor. You can just take some gouache and like wash out all this area. And then you have this abstract kind of floral. See how you see this? Vase. It's amazing what happens when you kind of paint. But I'm going to take my Princeton 8 Long Round now. And grab my yellow, peacock blue, my burnt umber. Makes a nice um, deep green color and some lighter green ones. So again with the Prussian blue. I have a light green over here on the right. And if I use ultimate blue and yellow, you'll see it's that sagey kind of green. See that? It's like an olive sagey green. So I see how I want to go now. I see where I'm going to go with this. I still have the stems up here, but now I'm going to play with this a little bit. I'm going to go up, push the stems down like this. See, now I'm creating some nice greenery kind of happening, kind of going up and over. Right? You see that? Do you see where I'm going with this? I get some dark green ones also. And then I feel like it needs something down this way. So I'm just kind of greens, just kind of hanging down. I feel like the stems are kind of going in this direction and kind of peeking this way. Oop. Oop. Not too much though, you don't want to overdo it, right? And then a few kind of like squish crisscrossing here. Those are the skinny ones. I just feel like that there's a kind of a vase happening here. So what am I going to do with that? Maybe I'll take some of that orangey, reddish brown color that I mixed over here, all this good goopy stuff. And see where this is taking me. It's taking me to like a vase. I just feel it. You're seeing it unfold in front of your eyes. Now that's orange. You want to add some brown maybe. See? You see the vase now? The pattern, maybe I'll add a little blue. Ultramarine blue. It's gonna make it have a gray tone. See how they just work that into a vase? Kind of cool. Didn't expect that, did you? <laughs> I love unexpected stuff. So now the blue would work well with the green below. Just wash in this blue color. Keeping that light kind of tone. We could even put a pattern in these. Now we got those floating kind of flowers here. We don't want things floating. So this kind of needs a stem. We'll connect that one. Put some, like almost like these buds that are just kind of floating, hanging, going downward. Grab some brown and some uh, paints gray. So that's kind of cool. I don't know if I'd like it this dark. So I can go back in. I'll grab a little paper towel if I can find one. <laughs> or just use my little rag and lift up some of that color. Did you see that? How I turned it into a an abstract vase. And I might play around with adding some of that wonderful bright rose. Kind of mush my brush going sideways. Adding some like little petal formations. See that? Wriggle, wiggle. You want to keep it still kind of super abstract, but give it some formation at the same time. Again, in here, get a little brighter with the color. I don't want to overwork this. I like the way it came out. I might go in here and add a little few doodads to kind of connect these flowers to this flowers. So it makes a little sense. And then we have that some bright chartreuse yellowish from that color. 
just love adding some of that from the the ph martins and this yellow orange color take some actual cadmium yellow deep mix it with some of the hydrus go back in here just kind of wiggle in some color it's watercolor it's just thicker on top you see that i can add a little bit of the orange kind of wiggle that so it's like a fuzzy little flower but you see it you notice it there you put a little bit of yellow in here now you might not even like i mean i don't know if i'd like this brown kind of tone so maybe i look just kind of loosen it a little bit more so you can kind of see it but it's not so dominant I like the way I came out. If I wanted to add some ultramarine blue, just in my paint, purple kind of color tones over in here, just a little tap it in. So like the ultramarine blue, like I said, let me grab some of that. And just do a little twisty, tappy, create another bloom kind of happening up over in here too. Just getting a variety of color tones in here. Can even put some right in here mixed with the wonderful bright rose you have purple see it's creating like a purple bloom tip tapping it's not particularly anything in particular but you're kind of going in there and adding this color which is kind of pretty i'm going to pull it down here right from the tube the blue with the pink and now I'm kind of cascading down a purple bloom, right? Maybe ultramarine blue deep, just tap that right there. I'm just twisting my brush and tapping it. I'm not doing anything special. A little bit over here. Right? Wasn't that fun? <laughs> I think it's so much fun to do abstracts. You just never know what's going to happen. I'm going to go grab some, like, orange color. I have a brilliant orange up here. I'm going to play around with throwing that in there too. Yeah. Again, I'm just twisting my brush and just kind of moving it. It's not one particular kind of flower. Taking that yellow itself. Boom, 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 boom. Getting back in here. Right out of the tube. So that's butter, butter, as we call it. For the water control people. I'm looking for the answers for that. A little bit of yellow in there. So now we've got this crazy abstract kind of bloom. Now here it looks a little too realistic, a little bit here. We could do a little mushing, just a little bit. Don't want to go too much. So then it's more abstract. A little bit of mushing. So you know, I'll mush it and I'll tap it up. I don't have a paper towel, but I have this little towel. And I think we're done. I might have removed a little bit more here, but I'm not minding the green too much. If you kind of scrape too much of the paint off, this is not going to work anymore. It's not going to do this for me. I'm trying to see if I can remove some of it. I've done so much to it already that I might ruin the paper. So I'm going to have to keep it like that. But I really like it. I think it's great. And look at the, look, look how you just kind of see where it unfolded and we created this really cool floral abstract. So. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed painting it, right? If you want to go in and do, add little lines when you do this, play around with the paint. Just kind of twist your brush around here and there. Remove it with the paper towel. Add a little more when it's dry. And you see what shape you might form. I, did, I just noticed that like there was some kind of line happening and just created that vase. So it's kind of fun, right, when you just do this. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial on just going for it with you know, watercolor abstract paintings, for florals. You know, it's like it's something so much fun that I, I can't describe. It's like just playing with color and doing all those techniques. It's a lot of fun, and especially when you're frustrated when you're painting and you don't know what else to paint. This is a great idea for those who are like, I don't know what to paint. I'm so sick of painting this. No, no, no. Or you're like painting something and you're feeling frustrated. You just walk away and do something really fun. So I did it on a large piece of paper. You could do it on a small piece of paper. We'll go much faster for you, but this is so much fun. 
So take care, guys. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Please don't forget to hit the bell notification button and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And have a great day. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to my channel. My name is Ellen. So it's Friday. We're doing Floral Friday and we're doing an abstract. Where do you see how this came about? I mean, it's, this is a really large paper block. It's a 12 by 15, I believe. And I show you how I use some big brushes and I moved all the paint around. And then I came about that you actually kind of notice a vase. And so I kind of showed the vase like as I was painting it, you know.